Guys, commonly referred to as a trim saw, the six and a half inch cordless circular saw is way more useful than just for cutting trim. Most six and a half saws have a blade left design, which many carpenters, many trim carpenters, often will say it just offers a better line of sight, which is better for accuracy or accurate cutting. But they're basically the same tool as their bigger seven and a quarter inch bigger sister, um, just in a smaller, lightweight, maybe a little less power package. I'm Rob Robillard, and in this head-to-head -head video review, we'll provide you with a thorough overview of the performance of the industry's top six and a half inch cordless circular saws. But before we jump in, I wanna um, address a couple of recent video comments from y'all. In the last seven and a quarter inch head-to-head -head that we did, we did not test the Flex 24 volt or the uh, Bosch Pro Factor. We did request them. So look, here's how it works. We send out an invitation to participate eight weeks ahead of time. And we invite manufacturers to participate in this head-to-head -head testing. We give them the whole criteria, what we're gonna test, all of it. Approximately four weeks later, we have to poke them, send them a reminder because more than half of them, you know, they procrastinate. Some companies have just outright told us when they see our testing criteria that they don't want their tool to be included in the testing. You do the math on that one. Other companies, they just drop the ball. They missed the deadline, maybe, you know, who knows what's going on. If we catch it, we can sometimes still get that tool to test. They'll overnight it, we, you know, we, we, we jump through hoops. Sometimes we screw up too, and we missed that the tool didn't arrive or show up on time. Hey, look, we're human too. Either way, on test day, we proceed without them, as there are a ton of moving parts and everybody's schedules that we have that make up these head-to-heads. So I hope this clears things up. Sometimes, um, this is why sometimes the tool is missing. All right, let's move on and discuss our testing format. Our crew tested a total of eight saws in seven categories for this head-to-head -head test. Our testing format pretty much mirrored our seven and a quarter inch uh, saw test, except we, we cut thinner material and we used less weight on our pull saw. Um, and we didn't rip LVL stock, but each of the criteria was ranked separately and there was uh, combined test results basically helped us determine the overall best six and a half inch cordless circular saw. Things we looked at were accuracy, line of sight, because those things are important, performance and power, speed, um, features, weight, noise, and obviously price. And then we always, as we always do in our head-to-heads, we included what we call our best value choice. If you're one of those folks that need all the nitty gritty details, then you've got to go to the Toolbox Buzz website article. That article has way more information. It has the specs, the model numbers, purchase links, all of the detail, way more detail than this video is going to have. This is more of a condensed version. So during our testing, all of the circular saws were equip equipped with a task specific, brand new Milwaukee six and a half inch blade, 40 tooth fine finish blade. This shifted the focus away from the individual tool blades and more towards the tools. By removing an external testing variable, the u by using these uniform blades throughout the testing, it just helps us maintain consistency and uniformity. Now, for the accuracy testing that we did in the line of sight testing, the winner of that was the Makita saw. These smaller saws, like I said, were once, once normally referred to as trim saws. So we were looking for good accuracy out of the box on all of these saws. For our accuracy test, we asked one experienced professional contractor user to use every single saw to cut plywood on a straight edge with a straight edge cut. Um, and you know, to, to, mar to rank the tools based on their performance and what he found. The saws were checked um, at 90 and 45 degree bevel settings as, as well for accuracy. And all of this information was compiled. We purposely had a single operator execute this test uh, because we felt multiple users might have different techniques of cutting and things like that. So therefore we wanted it as consistent as possible, comparing it to one single operator. So that was his function for the day. We also tested the accuracy of the scales and the kerf slots in the base plate of the saws. We wanted to see how well they lined up with the blade. So for the accuracy category, each of the circular saws was just ranked on that in the following areas. We looked at um, the scale, the slot accuracy. We looked at the bevel accuracy when set to 45. Uh, we looked at the cross cut accuracy when the saw was zeroed out at 90 degrees. 
And we looked at line of sight. When he was using the saw, could he see the blade? Could he see the slots? And how well did it work? And like I said, the accuracy testing winner was the Makita saw. Makita had a spot on bevel and square cuts, uh, as well as really good sight lines, very accurate base plate curves that allowed precise placement of a cut without even the need to look at the blade. Well done, Makita. Uh, the scale at the front of the saw is also adjustable. So, you know, that's going to allow you correction to any issues that come up in the future. You know, if it comes out of alignment, you bang it or ding it up or something. Um, both Metabo circular saws in the Milwaukee tied for second place. Three saws, second place. The Metabo 57 cut perfect bevel and square cuts. The, um, the Metabo 66 saw had an accurate kerf guide and made some good square cuts. Um, the bevel cuts on the 66 saw were slightly off, but the stop is adjustable and can be corrected. So we did correct it and we were able to get good cuts with it, but it takes some finessing. The Milwaukee has accurate kerf guides and an accurate square and bevel cuts as well. Really nice saw. Um, Milwaukee would have tied for first place. It really is a sweet saw, but there was no 45 degree stop on the bevel adjustment. So setting a good 45 degree really kind of requires a little extra attention from the user. There's no detent. The Bosch came in third and had kerf notches that were slightly offset from the actual cut. Um, and then things kind of went off from there. Um, also, uh, Bosch lacked a 45 degree stop on the bevel setting as well. And these two factors pretty much bumped it down to that third place spot. We looked at uh, the sightline base plates, like I told you about, and no matter how well a tool feels or how powerful it is in your hand, um, if you can't see what you're doing, you can't see the cut line or the saw blade, you're not going to have great results. At a minimum, you'll probably be pulling your hair out when you're trying to make a money cut, right? Bosch had the best line of sight on that for, for that uh, aspect of it, followed by the DeWalt in Milwaukee. Um, let's move on to performance testing. This was fun. We looked at power speed. The blade, it's with uh, rotational speed, number and size of the teeth, all of that, the, the, the motor, the torque in the motor, all that stuff, as well as horizontal force applied, all influence how quickly a circular saw can cut through any given material. When a saw is working too hard, a seasoned operator can typically hear that, they tell, and they, they're gonna just reduce the amount of force applied during the cut. We make those minuscule adjustments every day. A more powerful saw usually can handle this and counteract that, those resistances better and power through. Ultimately, it just basically remove more material and cut faster. Um, the Toolbox Buzz Crew needed to minimize all of those cutting variables. So uh, what we did is we wanted, we wanted to come up with a test to test the power and ultimately the speed of these saws. So what we did was uh, we put the same blade on every saw. Uh, we used consistent three quarter AC plywood as our cutting material. And we eliminated the entire human horizontal pushing component by using what would be best described as a drop weight pulley system and a low friction sled rig. For cutting and tracking consistency, each saw, we mounted it on a Craig AccuCut sled. Uh, it has a eight foot long section, track section, it was actually longer than eight feet. And um, we, we indexed three quarter inch AC plywood underneath it, under this AccuRide or Accu, AccuCut track system. An eight pound weight was mounted and it was attached to a line and hooked to that sled. And it just fed through a, a couple of a series of low friction pulleys. Now each test required three cuts for material. So three cuts were made for each saw and time. We took time for that and we averaged and compared. So three cuts um, average and that's how we got our, our score. We used micro switches at the beginning and at the end to control the stop, start and stop times. And again, that was done to eliminate the human error while you know using a portable stopwatch and, and being off. We're trying to be as accurate as possible. The track system was cleared of sawdust and any debris after each and every cut, and we lubricated it with silicone prior to the first cut. Um, and that's just to ensure, again, we just wanted smooth, low friction cuts. The result of this test was that the more powerful saws were able to maintain the blade's rotational speed, cutting through the plywood faster. The fastest saw was the rigid, cutting a little over a foot a second with an average cutting speed of 9.6 seconds, eight foot long board. 
This saw cut effortlessly, and it was clear that the recent improvements that Rigid made to this saw increased its cutting power. Um, a close second to that went to the Metabo 57 saw um, with an average cut time of 9.8 seconds, very close. Uh, and the Metabo 66 saw came in third place with an average time of 10 seconds for the cut. Um, both impressive saws, those Metabo saws, and we'll talk more about those later in the features, but they're really nice saws. The features, the Metabo 57 won the overall features. So let's break down features a little bit. We ranked them one to five. Uh, the entire team used the saws throughout the day doing multiple cutting configurations and tests. And we rated six different features on these saws. Like I said, a one to five scale, we ranked them on one being the best. Um, some of the features that we considered was the blade change and the spindle lock. We looked at the bevel adjustments and how ease of bevel and controls, blade depth. We looked at the trigger in the grip comfort-wise and pinch point stuff like that. Uh, considered electric brake, sight line, scale. Um, so let's start with blade change. The winner of that was Metabo, Metabo 56. We evaluate blade change on these saws, but there was no real, real clear standouts. The Metabo 66, I'm sorry, yeah, the 66 was the easiest saw to change the blade on. Part of the reason for this was that the 66 does not have a base plate on the blade due to the fact that the saw is actually track compatible. Additionally, it has a guard retractor level lever um, located near the arbor lock that can uh, both be actuated with one hand to assist, assist in the blade change. The crew felt that this was a, a really great design feature and they all liked it. Um, the Bosch was difficult to change the blade due to very tight tolerances between the blade and the retractable guard. The blade actually scraped while inserting. It was That's how tight things were. Uh, the Makita does not have an onboard wrench for blade changing, which was kind of a bummer, um, which is going to have you looking for a hex key when you need to change a blade because we all know you don't walk around with the hex key in your pocket, right? So uh, the Metabo saws both had the most locking detents for blade chains. They had 12 compared to the DeWalt, which only had two. You spin the blade almost, you know, 180 to get it to, uh, 90 to get it to lock. All the other saws fell somewhere between four and 12. Um, bevel bevel uh, winner for features was the Metabo 57 saw. A bevel scale should be easily and quickly set to achieve common bevel values. Six of the eight saws bevel to 50 degrees, with the exception of the Metabo 66, which bevels only to 46, and the Metabo HPT, which bevels only to 45. I know, I was like, come on, Metabo. Uh, all of the saws, with the exception of the Bosch, Milwaukee, and Metabo, use a lever lock or lever style lock. Um, the Bosch bevel lever lock has a like a plastic wing nut and a coarse thread and a lot of play in it. And the team felt that that could easily become loose and fall off and get lost. The um, Milwaukee and the Metabo saws had noticeably much better designed bevel level levers, just better fit and finish quality. The DeWalt had the stiffest bevel adjustment, really stiff. Uh, and look, we understand that probably over time this will probably loosen up, but we're evaluating these, you know, day one. Uh, the Metabo 57 has kind of, uh, has these ball detents at 45 and will max out at 50. Really nice detents. Um, and it also has a dual bevel lock, front and rear. The crew really favored the Milwaukee though because of its easy to read scale and it had the nicest, um, nicest action, bevel action. Now, uh, blade depth adjustment. The winner of that was Makita. And our crew basically decided that, you know, look, adjusting the depth of a saw, you know, is best left to a quick check on the, on the material, the workpiece, to see if the blade just extends just beyond the material you're gonna cut, right? That's pretty much how we set things. Still, there's, a mu there's much to be said, maybe that, that a gauge on a saw, you should be able to set it fast and it should be fairly accurate, you know, close. The Metabo HPT and the Rigid have an inline straight little lever, like almost like a little rod located between the saw guard and the handle that the team did not like. We didn't like that design at all. It wasn't easy to hit, you could miss it. The 57, Metabo 57 has a super smooth action, bevel action, and the cam lock style with a, um, a lever that works really well. It's kind of, it's odd. DeWalt, Bosch, and Milwaukee all have out outboard levers, um, decent action, and the, scale, the scales could be a little bit nicer, a little better. The Makita has a silicone lever, 
high contrast scale, large numbering, easy to read, and it's got a nice action in it. Okay, we looked at trigger and grip, and the winner of that was a tie between Makita and Metabo HPT. We considered the frequent motion of an index finger when running a circular saw and looking at tool triggers, right? So this type of a movement, this pulling movement, we can all agree should be pleasant and it should be smooth. In contrast to say a pinch point between trigger and a housing or, uh, or something that might be um, painful over time or generate hot spots. A longer trigger allows more than one finger to actuate or engage and, and that could lessen discomfort if you're using the saw long periods of time. We unanimously like the Metabo 57. Super nice rubber overmold on the trigger, making it the nicest trigger by far. The Metabo HPT and the Makita had the best grip trigger combo. They both had excellent overmolds and well-shaped, comfortable grips and rounded, kind of smooth trigger edges, which you're not gonna get those hot spots of those you know, digging into you. The Milwaukee Snap action, action Trigger was not a favorite among the team, but regular users, myself included, commented that we don't really notice it anymore once you start using the saw. Just click, click, and just use it. Um, okay, some of the saws had some standout features that um, stood out as having maybe an impact on performance or safety. I'll just briefly touch on them. It was noted that the DeWalt, Makita, Milwaukee, and Rigid all have rafter hooks. Trim saw, but still a nice feature. The Metabo 66 is the only track compatible saw, giving it, you know, really a standout there. It's a really nice feature and to note in this category. Uh, we moved on to weight of the saws, and the winner of that was rigid. Weight and balance are two words that many tradespeople speak to when they first pick up a tool for the first time and try it out. The lightest tool of the group was the rigid at 5.9 pounds followed by the Metabo HPT at six pounds and the Makita at 6.2, no batteries. Now, from there we moved on to noise, decibels, and the winner of that was Milwaukee. Now, OSHA is gonna require eight hours of exposure for noise levels up to 90, 90 decibels, but the exposure limit drops rapidly when you go to 95 and above. So all these saws require hearing protection. We used a noise meter to measure the saw's decibel level at a no load situation and a set distance nearly at the same height as a user's ear spacing that between the saw. Um, and we wanted to do that to just be consistent. The crucial point here is that these saws were compared against each other in a consistent manner. You know, we don't have high-end testing, you know, equipment. We're not in one of those anachromic or whatever you call it chambers. So despite the fact that the decibel measures, uh, decibel measurements are relative to any setting, right? So we evaluated these saws in a no load capacity. No, um, nonetheless, when the saws were loaded and you were cutting material, the noise goes way up and the cutting material obviously is going to dictate some of that noise. That quietest saw was that Milwaukee. They had 95 decibel rating with the Metabo HPT really close behind at 95.5. All right, price. Winner of price was the Bosch and price can sometimes be the deciding factor in whether or not you purchase a tool. We all can agree on that. We can all agree that price is an important factor when you're first trying or buying tools or first buy, you know, starting out in the trades and especially for newbies in the trades. So we also understand that a lot of you guys are, are brand loyal loyalists, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna stick with your brand regardless of price or any of that stuff because you're brand loyal, I get that. We, we looked at the price, we don't use it in our overall rankings because it could hurt some of the nicer tools. But the bulk of these saws, they're all gonna be found at your big box stores and most of them can be purchased online at Acme Tools. They have great pricing. We've included bare tool pricing at the time of this video. So if you're seeing a different price right now because you're watching this video later, it changed. The lowest price saw was the Bosch and it was 114 bucks, 114.80. Coming in second to that was Metabo HPT at 139. And third place went to the Rigid and DeWalt, both tied at 149. Now, interesting enough, the most expensive saw was the Metabo 66 at $349. Now, this saw has outstanding design features, such as that track compatible base plate I talked about, phenomenal ergonomics, really nice blade guard lever, retractable lever, and all contributes to its high cost. Okay, who won the best overall, best class, six and a half cordless circular saw? Ultimately, we selected a tool that performed exceptionally well in its primary function 
delivered high quality features that enhanced performance. The Metabo KS18 LTX57 performed consistently in the categories that mattered. It scored a perfect score of features, came in second in performance and accuracy. Weight was the only category that hurt the Metabo. This Metabo took first place with nine points. Really good showing for this saw. Rigid came in a close second at 10 points. And Rigid also took the top spot in performance and weight. Rigid slipped a little bit in accuracy and features, but it came in for a solid number two placement. So hats off to Rigid. It delivered a powerful cutting performance in a lightweight and compact package. The weight to uh, power ratio was tremendous. Third place went to the Makita saw. Now Makita has always had a, it's always been a solid competitor and this saw is no different. The um, Makita took, it took top spot in our accuracy assessment, which is important for a saw, second in features and came in third in weight. It suffered in performance and was slightly underpowered when compared to the other saws, but it's still a really nice saw. My personal thoughts on the Makita saw is that um, the user experience is just plain excellent. Makita does it right when it comes to carpenters. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about best value. Now, the best value saw was the rigid. This category winner often resonates more with people because it highlights the saw that A, performed well, and B, costs less. So in some ways, it's, it's, sometimes, more, it's sometimes a more important category than the top spot that got crowned the you know, the king best of best of best. This is typically the saw that performed well in our testing and is just priced right for the wallet. In this case, Rigid crushed the testing and is still priced at $149. With a brushless motor delivering 5,000 RPMs, this unit has a speed to torque that just makes fast, fast cuts and it's a pretty darn accurate saw. The compact design and magnesium guard make it the lightest saw in its, its category for six and a half saws. The weight to power ratio rocks, and it's just a great line of sight, nice to use saw. All right, so to conclude, our team of contractors put out significant amount of time and effort and attention to detail in these head-to-head -head analysis. In order, and our goal, in order to provide you with the most thorough data available, these tests, how do I say this? These tests and evaluations are complex, they're time consuming, and because we're not a professional tool testing laboratory, we are totally limited with the time on tools as well as the scope on testing, and we don't have all the equipment, right? So we also don't have the resources to do long-term uh, longevity tests on these saws. You're always asking about durability and long life. We don't have that resources to do that. You have complete control of all the information that we share. You either want it or you don't want it. Use it, you don't use it. If you don't like a category that we scored, just remove it from the matrix and reorder it. It's up to you. That's why we share all the data and all the rankings. We also recognize that many of you tradespeople are invested a ton of money in a battery platform and you're gonna stick with the brand regardless of where it ranks. That's cool, I'm cool with that. Our goal was to arm you with the knowledge you need to make good, solid decisions. And boy, do we have a blast doing it. A lot of fun doing these tests. Guys, thanks for following along with this head-to-head -head test. If you have a moment, please check out our other head-to-heads. We've got maybe 20 or 30 of them we've done. Um, I want to just mention this video was sponsored by Acme Tools. For three generations, Acme Tools have been a family-owned business. Uh, they service pro contractors. They, they work with woodworkers and DIYers as well. And they have a huge selection of tools from all across the manufacturers. They also offer free shipping, fast processing, huge stock of tools, which is nice because they have tools in stock. I love that. Their price guarantees are pretty good and they have great package deals every once in a while. You gotta pay attention. Check them out online at acmetools.com. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you at the next head-to-head -head test, which, by the way, will be the rear-handled circular saws. Take care.